Rodri, uh, thank you very much for speaking to us. Um, starting with the title race, how does it feel to be in a title race and how does it compare to previous years? Well, of course, it's always so glad and emotional to be part of that race once again. This talks about the, the mentality and the regularity of the team all these years. I think it's after what we came the last season, winning quite everything. Um, and having the desire and ambition to, to fight again and to arrive into this moment, to have chance, to give chances to ourselves to fight again is, is something remarkable and amazing. This team, uh, I've been here five years, and quite all of the years I've been running for for the league title and fighting. So it's something special. This team, and yeah, this year we we have the same idea and ambition to to win it again. How do you avoid the double treble talk? Well, it's something, something natural. I mean, on, on, the, on the people, it's something that doesn't affect us in, in the sense that we know exactly what we have to do. Uh, we have to go game by game and try to arrive until the end of the season. Right now, to fight for everything, but and we have the experience now to know that the, every single game until the end is going to be a final, not even uh, whatever tournament or competition you are playing. So this is the mentality we're going to go for everything. I think we, we gave everything to ourselves to, as I tell you, to give us the chance to fight again. And as I said, they have to come to our house to, to steal it for us and, uh, and to, to win it in the Etihad. That is not, not easy. Does it make a difference if it's a two horse race or a three horse race? Well, to be honest, never in my career I faced that situation, to, to be honest, three teams that can uh, win the, the title, uh, yeah, it's, I think for the, for the leagues is, is amazing. Uh, of course, uh, for the ones that are fighting, you, you will like uh, only one or not even one, but it's, uh, it's how good football and how it talks about the uh, quality and the level right now in the Premier League. So, yeah, we'll fight. The, this means that you have to focus on yourself, not look much on what Arsenal and Liverpool are doing. I think if we have to... We have to focus on ourselves, do our run, and, and let's see what happens at the end. You do have Arsenal on the weekend. Does it feel like a decisive weekend? It is. No, definitely. We know that we have to win that game. Otherwise, it will be very, very difficult. In the fact that maybe in, a, in an, another year, if we're fighting just against Arsenal or just against mm -hmm. Liverpool, is face to face. Uh, but now, if we draw, you know, maybe Liverpool, they will have a, a gap uh, again to. To gain, so it's something that we know we have to win. We're gonna go for it. We're at home. Uh, is the mentality of the team. You mentioned you know what to do. So what role does experience make? Because you you are one of the leaders of the team. You've been through this situation before. So so how do you feel this influence in this type of situation? Well, the experience is uh, is important. I, I don't play in the same way in the first time I win the league than mm -hmm. the last time. Uh, you are more mature. You know when you have to go full gas, when you have to be the best version of yourself. And this is the moment. This is the uh, the moment of the season where you have to give everything. Maybe uh, I've been kind of, uh, how do you say in English, uh, taking care of myself uh, to be at the best shape of myself in this moment. And I will give everything the best, my, my best level, the same as my teammates. This is something that we know. And that's all we said before. Um, uh, I think the City performance will be the best so far in this season and in the end. So this is uh, the most important uh, uh, to know these kind of things. And you come to this match, you haven't lost for club and country for a year. It's an impressive start. It's a good start to, to walk into a match like this, right? Well, it is. It is uh, very, very happy for that. Of course, I always said that the, it makes me happy in the fact that if it's um, consequences of winning titles, um, Nothing will be uh, great if it means no titles or you know any anything of that. So it's uh, my only remark on this is winning uh, as collectively and winning the Premier League in this case. Uh, and we know that uh, we have to kind of uh, give the rest, you know, mm -hmm. even though it's not easy when so far the, the season where we can win in everything. Mm -hmm. uh this Sunday you have Declan Rice on the other side and of course there are comparisons between you two for the influence you guys have on both teams, passing, defending, distribution. Mm -hmm. So so how do you see, how do you see his game? Well, I I, I know Declan for a few years. Uh, I met him 
Uh, I remember one day in holidays we were talking about friendly. Um, and he, he's he's a nice guy. What, what I hear, he's he's learning a lot. I think he's growing uh, massively as a player, as we can see. He's a great, great uh, midfielder. Uh, now with Mikel, since uh, the same as me when my first year, Mikel was here with Pep. I think his influence in him is, is being great, uh, and I, I think he's, he's doing great uh, in Arsenal. In the fact that it's not easy to, to change the, the way he played in, in West Ham and to change into an Arsenal that it plays so so different. So yeah, big credit uh, for them, for for the team in general, how they're performing the last years. Uh, and yeah, uh, what else I can say? Yeah, because you're both very dominant on, on the same area of the pitch, but maybe you have a different idea on, on control or rhythm? Well, I always say the same. I think uh, the players, uh, I think myself, I'm, I'm not the same player of that everyone else had this, the same, maybe Declan thinks the same of himself. I think everyone with his own qualities physically and tactically plays the best version of himself to adapt into the team. I think a very different kind of player in terms of the way I see football, the way I, see, I control the game uh, in my team, and the things that my coach demand from me that may be different from from Mikel. So, yeah, you can see on the pitch. I think he's, uh, of course, uh, very strong uh, physicality, and he can make runs of 30, 40 meters uh, so easily because he has this this power to to do it. Uh, so that's why I think we're different kind of players. But at the same time, we play in the same position, uh, and I always said I try to learn. Uh, from the best midfielder so far uh, in my career. And uh, you, you were saying about this uh, midfield role and, and control. Do you see yourself kind of like a tactician uh, in midfield? Because you're very influential on the pace, on on mm -hmm. the rhythm of the of the game. What's the meaning of tactician? Yes, on tactical. Like tactical. Si. Well, I've learned, uh, to be honest, uh, by, the, by the time I've been here in in, in City, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, I think it's the biggest role in, in as a as a holding midfielder to control the the tempo and the rhythm uh, in the game. It's, it's everything for us uh, in the way we understand football. So uh, imagine if you play against a team that uh, is likely to play fast. Uh, it's not smart to do that, that way. We have to slow the game, and sometimes you have to increase it. And I think uh, the player who has the key on that sense is, is the midfielder in general, the, the, the three midfielders, but specifically my position. Uh, and yeah, I think it's something I have to read and something I have to translate, try to translate to my teammates. And the passing as well. You, you were talking about your progress, but your your numbers, your stats in passing, long passes, short passes, side passes, they're mm -hmm. all outstanding. How, how do you practice that? How do you progress mm -hmm. in passing? Well, I think passing, uh, Pass is, is something that's been natural for me since I was uh, little. I've uh, been growing, of course, in a Spanish culture. Uh, that, uh, as, you, as you can know, that uh, it's, it's easier for us to to learn it uh, because our football. But uh, yeah, it, I always said that it's not just pass; it's the way you think what the pass is going to be and is, is, is the best option. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to try to combine, be dominant in the short, in the long, uh, when to be more vertical, when to keep the ball. And this is something you learn from the years. Uh, I, I said before, I tried to grow myself the last years, uh, try to be more vertical, more mm -hmm. uh, with that my influence is more damage for the opponent uh, in the last third with assist with goals also with more participating in the last third um, and yeah this club give me this opportunity because we play most of the time in the last third and yeah it's something I, I've grown. How is it to be a holding midfielder under a manager that makes it very clear that this is the most important position on the pitch, that this is the most important area? At first, is it kind of intimidating at, at, at some level, you know, because he makes it so clear that it's so important, you know? Well, you have to, as you said, uh, you have to take the responsibility. Sometimes it's not easy, sometimes it's, uh, you can feel over, you know, exposed because, um, yeah, you play most of the times alone and lots of the players on front and not uh, helping you in the short, you know. Uh, but it's something that if you understand that this is profit and good for the team, uh, is the way we can succeed, you have to adapt it. And I, I think it's something great for me, the way I, I've grown in this sense. Uh, and it, it can allow me to play every single way of playing, more 
close, more long, more uh, with more plays in between, you know, many things. And this is something that completes you as a player. And not only he makes it very clear how important midfield is, he was also a holding midfielder. So, so yeah, he was. <laughs> I would say that he was a holding midfielder in an other era. <laughs> in an other Have era. you seen him clips? No, uh, no, no, no. I was very, very young when he played. But yeah, some clips. But uh -huh. uh, as he says, as as I said, uh, football has changed a lot in in the way uh, the midfielder understand the game. Of course, he knows exactly, and that's why the communication between. Him and me is easier uh, because he played that, that position, but he understands also that the things that uh, he demands from me is not the same uh, as his time. And this is why he asks more things, you know, because football mm -hmm. is developed. And as I said to you before, the difference and the distance between the teams is so small. So even though things are different, in a way, you kind of learn from Pep Guardiola, the player, yeah. as well. Yeah, of course. There's something. In f some I always said that football uh, is already invented in, in the sense that, um, yeah, every, every year is developing, but at the end, the, the essence sense mm -hmm. of, of the sport is quite the same. Uh, the midfielder has to control, the midfielder has to make the team play, uh, and yeah, it's, it's the way it's going to be always. How is he, how is Pep at this point of the season? Well, as, as everyone knows that the this is where we fight for everything and of course this is the, the moment of the year that is going to demand more for us. No excuses, there's no mm, moments of, uh, how do you say, um, laying down or whatever. It's, some, it's a moment to be compact and go forward no matter what happens mm -hmm. and it's something you can breathe from his uh, speech. Mm -hmm. From your vision of the game, uh, we can kind of imagine that you would go into management at some point uh, in your life, but you also have a, a business and economics degree yeah. as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I would say, I think at the end, at the minute, I don't think much on that. I think uh, football is such, um, uh, how do you say, uh, con congested, uh, uh, congestionado. Very, very demanding, yeah, uh, business or sport. So I think when I finish my career, I'm, I'm not sure that in the short uh, time I would like to keep, you know, uh, in the in the same world um, or in the same business because it's very demanding in the head and physically. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I study business because I want to be, I want to have formation as a person, as a, anything else that more than than a footballer. And let's see what I can do when I finish. But uh, at the minute, I tell you that uh, maybe, maybe no. But studying was very important to you because you studied yeah. when you were playing, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I started studying when I you didn't video, yeah. uh, start as a professional uh, because I always said that um, as my first choice. When you never know, like it's something that the, the kids have to learn that uh, when you play football, it's great, but you need to have uh, chances, opportunities for your future, and you cannot give just one way and football is one way and if it doesn't happen what's going to be uh, your future so I always have that in mind I always uh, cultivate my mind and my studies to to have something in the future and when I realized I could be a footballer then I then I, I stop kind of stop studying but yeah I have a degree and I'm very uh, proud of, of making both things and because People say, no, it's because it's very difficult. It's, it's just a matter of effort and sacrifice yourself to, to achieve what you want. Were you a good student? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, always come, I, I was a very good worker. Okay. Uh, I, I, wo I don't need to study much to understand the things. Uh, I, I wasn't the guy to study three, four hours a day. Uh, I economized my time to, to learn very good the things. Uh, that I read or, or what I, they teach me and I think this is something I, I explode. That's kind of like you are on the pitch yeah, as maybe, well. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And finally, what is it going to take to beat Arsenal? Uh, well, it's gonna, um, in terms of the title race, uh, not much to be honest because um, we will be, it, it will mean that we'll be, be, we'll be there fighting again. Uh, in terms of points, it's still nine games. Uh, so even though if we draw or lose, nothing is done. Uh, but we know that uh, how the difference are right now, we, we must to win. And it's, I think 
the the most important thing will be the mental one the for us and for for the opponent to show them that we are here again and we beat you again and and we're gonna uh, if you want to keep us the uh, for uh, the title of ours, you have to suffer a lot. And this is uh, something that will be important. So this is why I encourage my team on Sunday to to be completely focused and know that they, if we you know, knock the, the table on Sunday and beat them, it will be hard for them and, and better for us to to the title race. And on the pitch, what will be important? Because you have to break their, their mm -hmm. lines as well. They, they, can, they can have a different pace. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, we, we face them quite a lot of times. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of play the same way. Uh, we try to play, I think, a bit more direct than, mm -hmm. than last year. Uh, they, they are uh, less, mm, let's say, practice in terms of, of passing, they're more direct and vertical and, and they exploit more the set pieces and the contra-attacks, they have kind of different players in this sense, like with the wingers they have and, and the number eight and tens, they are very, very um, uh, attacking players and this is why we have to be aware. We have to bring the game to our side, bring the game to what is good for us, uh, control the tempo uh, and wait the, the moment because I think what we are better than them at the minute is that we are more mature in this kind of situations. Mm -hmm. uh, something that we have to exploit. Good luck then on Sunday. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rodri.